Hi and welcome to True Crime, a channel dedicated to the dark underworld of criminal activity carried out by gangsters, mobsters, cartel leaders, and others. Let's get started. The case of Joshua Stimson, a 26-year-old man who brutally murdered his ex-girlfriend, Molly McLaren, in a shopping mall car park in Kent, England, in 2017, sent shockwaves throughout the country. The horrific details of the crime and Stimson's cold and calculated behavior are have made it one of the most talked about criminal cases in recent memory. This video will delve into the background of Joshua Stimson examining his mental health, his relationship with Molly McLaren, and the events that led up to the murder. It will also explore the impact that the case had on society and the criminal justice system and the lessons that can be learned from this tragic story. Through this analysis, we will gain a deeper understanding of the factors that contribute to domestic violence and the ways in which we can work to prevent such atrocities from happening in the future. Molly McLaren attended the University of Kent and was 23 years old. On the dating app Tinder in 2016, Molly met a man by the name of Joshua Stimson. They didn't actually meet until October of that same year and they started dating soon after. However, Molly broke the relationship permanently in June 2018, and Stimson soon started harassing her online by posting offensive remarks and images. McLaren had informed her friends via social media that she was afraid of her ex-partner and had gone to the North Kent police station with her mother, Joanna. Only two days prior to killing McLaren, Stimson received a second contact from a police officer warning him to halt or face charges. Stimson was observed by security cameras in Chatham, buying a knife from Asda two days prior to the murder. A pickaxe was another item he purchased from home base less than 30 minutes later. Stimson, who had been following Molly since their breakup 12 days prior, approached her as she was working out at the gym on June 29, 2018. Before heading back to her Citroen in the Chatham Dockside Outlet parking lot, the worried student had confronted her ex and inquired as to whether he was following her. After texting her mother Joanne at 10.45 m to inform her that Stimson had arrived at the gym and was standing next to her, she then exchanged 20 texts with a friend regarding Stimson's behavior. The 23-year killer was waiting for her with a bag containing the two knives and pickaxe he used to slaughter her, but she was unaware of this. Once she was in the driver's seat, Stimson got out of the car, ripped open her door, and swung his knife at her repeatedly. While yelling and honking her horn, Molly attempted to fend him off, but she passed away shortly after. Stimson was born in Stoke-on-Trent and later resided in Woodham, a small town close to Rochester. The 26-year-old warehouse worker first connected with Molly on Tinder in November 2016, and the two dated for four months before a brief breakup. About 12 days before she passed away, on June 17, 2018, she officially stopped their relationship. Nonetheless, an infatuated Stimson immediately started posting negative remarks and images on Facebook about the occasional bartender. They included untruths about her using cocaine and the tagging of individuals for the benefit of her entire family. Prior to her passing, Molly had informed her mother that she had seen Stimson's There's More to Come internet posts made after their breakup. They disseminated pictures of him to their neighbors out of concern, and Molly reported the images to the police on June 22. Previously, the court heard testimony from two ex-girlfriends about how Stimson pursued them after their breakup. Alexandra Dale threatened to drown her while she was on vacation and said he would follow her, photograph her, and send her a picture of her back garden. Lee Hubbard claimed that after they broke up, he spat beer all over her at a party and waited outside for hours for her to leave. Also, Molly had received two warnings from police to stay away from her, and they had last spoken to them on June 27 of last year, two days before she passed unexpectedly. Following Molly's passing, Kent police filed a complaint with the Independent Police Complaints Commission. After less than three hours, the jury found Stimson guilty of murder and sentenced him to life in prison with a minimum term of 26 years. In Maidstone Crown Court, Stimson had pleaded guilty to manslaughter with diminished responsibility based on an aberration of functioning brought on by a mental illness. Nevertheless, the jury had other ideas. Following her passing, Molly's family and friends established the Molly McLaren Foundation contribution website, which helped generate thousands of dollars for charity. The charity will choose organizations that aid sufferers of eating disorders to receive the funds. 
In addition, it will increase public awareness of eating disorders and the work charities undertake. For those of you who are close to Molly, you will know that she suffered with bulimia and subsequently anxiety as a result of an eating disorder for many years of her life, reads a statement on the Just Giving page. She didn't let this defeat her, instead, she used her experience to inspire those around her. With the establishment of the Molly McLaren Foundation, we aim to use her passion and determination to produce the most uplifting result possible in her honor. The Molly McLaren Foundation has raised money since her passing by hosting Molly Fest, a charity festival. The case of Joshua Stimson and Molly McLaren serves as a haunting reminder of the devastating impact that domestic violence can have on individuals, families, and communities. Through our analysis of this tragic story, we have gained valuable insights into the complex and multifaceted nature of domestic violence, including the role of mental health, relationship dynamics, and societal attitudes. It is clear that preventing domestic violence requires a multi-pronged approach that includes education, awareness raising, early intervention, and effective law enforcement. By working together to address the root causes of domestic violence, we can create a safer and more equitable society for all. Let the memory of Molly McLaren and all other victims of domestic violence inspire us to take action and make meaningful changes. Thank you for watching another amazing video from our true crime team. Like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned to our next real-life true crime video.